By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have another match for you from the Ufton Troll Cup. And in this second match here on the channel, you are going to look at a mono blue fish deck taking on a counter burn deck. And Aryan is the player who's playing with the mono blue deck versus Martin who's playing with the counter burn deck. Now before I go into the deck deck, I just want to mention that you can check out the description below and there you will find a timestamp that reads MTG games. You can click on the timestamp and that will take you straight to the game. So you can skip the deck deck if you want to. If you stick around here, we are gonna go to the deck deck deck. And we're gonna start with the mono blue fish deck of Aryan. Let's take a look. And here we see the mono blue fish deck. And um, yeah, I think I'm calling it here Mr. T's fish because of, of course that beautiful play mat that he has there. And you see Mr. T looking through the deck. Um, let's just let's just kind of look at first at the traditional part of the deck. Uh, Mono Blue Fish, what does it want to do? Well, it wants to play Murphic of the Pearl Trident, Lord of Atlantis, Surrender Pafrit, just having a lot of cheap creatures, the Lords, the Pump, the Murphic Pearl Tridents, you know, so you get just strong creatures on the board and then you can use your blue cards to control the game like Counter Spells, Power Sinks, Mana Drains. And I'm saying the word Counter Spell, look at this list again. There is no Counter Spell in this list. So that's the first thing that I noticed when I just quickly glance at this list, like where, where are the counter spells? He's choosing not to play with them. So that's quite interesting. I guess instead he's chosen to go for a more beefy approach with the fish because he's also playing with uh, Surrender Jin. He's playing with Suchi, he's playing with Air Elemental. He's playing with a single copy of a Mahamoti Jin. So he's chosen to go a little bit more creature, a little bit more beefy. Um, and, and maybe that will, will hand him over the victory long term if he's kind of, if he cannot win it uh, in the early game, although I do think he has a deck that wants to deal a lot of damage in that early game and possibly finish it off with his Psy Blast. So that's always uh, a possibility. Another interesting thing here is that he's playing two Phantasmal Terrains main. I think that's actually a very good decision. I think Phantasmal Terrain offers you not just an opportunity to create a land um, at your opponent's side, an island that is, uh, because that is what you really want to do when you've got Lord of Atlantis on the board, uh, but it also allows you to deal with, for example, Maze of If. These aggressive decks, kind of suicide bluish, they have a tendency to, you know, kill themselves. Surrender Free deals one damage, and that Surrender Jin. For the people that don't know, it's a card from Arabian Nights, two blue and two to cast. It's a five six flyer, and in your upkeep, you have to sacrifice a land. Exactly, you got to sacrifice a land. If that land is an island then the Surrender deals three damage to you. So that can be really, really tricky. So in other words, you don't want to face uh, a bunch of Maze of Ifs at your opponent's side. So your Phantasmal Terrain can kind of help you there. And when you look at this deck, of course he's playing with a Strip Mine and a Chaos Orb. So that means that he's got four solutions to deal with non-basic lands. And that's actually what I personally kind of like. I think in the modern Swedish era, you kind of need four or maybe even five solutions to, to deal with all these special powerful lands. And of course, Strip Mine is an auto-include, Chaos Orb is an auto-include, and then you kind of have two or three slots to be creative and to think, okay, how am I going to deal with these lands? Or perhaps you have a completely different strategy where you say, you know what, I'm gonna allow my, my opponent to have all these lands, I simply don't care. But I think this is a deck, Aryan's deck here absolutely does care about that. Looking at the rest of the list, I think uh, Diamond Valley is a very interesting inclusion. We just talked about how this deck can also blow up itself, and Diamond Valley is kind of um, a safety switch on that. So you can kind of sack your 5-6 Jin or your, um, your Surrender Perfect to the Diamond Valley, gain some life. And of course, there's also the Diamond Valley Control Magic com uh, combination that's quite nice. I really like the two Air Elementals in this deck. Just because I'm I'm a big fan of the art, I'm not sure if they're gonna work out here. I mean, it is five mana for a four four flyer, which is okay in old school, but I think in this type of deck, it sounds pretty steep. So I'm curious to see how this is gonna work out. Also, the two surrender gins. You can also play this deck where you say I'm gonna play four surrender pafrits, one surrender gin, and uh, Lord of Atlantis and Murphic of the Pearl Trident, and those are my creatures. Perhaps you could switch the Murphic of the Pearl Trident with the Flying Man, and you can say, these are my creatures. But it's clear that Aryan has made um, a different choice. And with those choices, he's making the deck a little bit more um, 
a deck a little bit more that's a little bit more focused on the mid game instead of the early game. So I'm I'm really going to look at that. That's really interesting. I also think that uh, Splash of Black could be a good decision just because he has now access to the Demonic Tutor and that really helps when he needs to find a Silver Bullet. Um, okay, so this is the deck of Aryan. I'm really curious how it's going to do against the deck of Martin and Martin's playing with Counterburn. Let's take a look at that deck list. And here we see the deck of Martin and I've called it Counterburn on a Diet. And you're probably wondering why on a diet? This looks like a brutal deck. Yes, it does, but when you look close, you closely, you probably notice that there is no power nine in this deck, and of course, that would be a really uh, obvious inclusion to actually almost include all the power here. I guess not the off-color Moxen, although you could even argue that that could be a good inclusion in this brew. Anyway, he's not playing with it, and I know Martin. He's got a beautiful collection. He's got fantastic altars. Some of those altars you can see right here on this picture, um, and he has chosen not to play with power. He's one of those players that um, kind of enjoys to to set himself challenges and see, okay, how can I take it from here? So he's not always making the obvious choices. Now, when we're looking at this, you know, Counterburn, of course, being a very well-known tier one deck, and in this case, he's not playing with power, doesn't mean it's not strong, because, oh, it looks mighty strong to me. He's playing four Flying Man, four Surrender Pafrit, nothing surprising there, two often trolls, that is a surprise, and it's really nice to see, nice blackboard at once, and of course, he's playing with that because this is the often troll cup. He's also playing with four counter spells, two power sinks, no surprise there, four bolts, and he's playing with a red elemental blast main, so that is quite spicy, that's quite interesting. And I believe those three cards behind the red elemental blast there, it's kind of hard to see. I think there are three blood moons. So he's playing with a lot of blood moons in his deck. He's also playing with three energy fluxes main. So he really wants to shut down his opponent with the blood moons and with the energy flux. Now, of course, he's playing against a mono deck. So those uh, those bat moons, or sorry, those blood moons are not going to do very much in this uh, game. But the red elemental elemental blast, that will probably be very, very valuable. Um, and then we also see two Earthquakes, two Fireballs, so no Disintegrate, but choosing to go with a Fireball, which is quite interesting because, again, he is playing in the Often Troll format, uh, Often Troll Cup, sorry. Um, so he's probably going to encounter a lot of Trolls, so maybe a Disintegrate would be the better decision here, but I'm sure he has his reasons. And he's also playing with four Psyblasts, man, so not three, not to no, a full playset of side blasts. So there is a lot of direct damage in this deck. And then also interesting to see four Psychic Purges. Now for the people that don't know this card, uh, first of all, I really love the art. It's really goofy. I mean, look at the wizard, look at him, <laughs> right? Um, let's take a look at this card. Uh, it's one blue sorcery. Psychic Purge deals one damage to target creature or player. So, okay, so that's that's pretty nice. Um, but what else does it does it uh, does it do? This is interesting. When a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard the perch, that player loses five life. Now remember, he is playing against Aryan, who is playing with a mind twist. So I'm actually hoping that a psychic perch is in Martin's hand, if or and when he gets mind twisted. That would be a beautiful play to see. You know, five damage is a lot of damage, especially when you're playing against such an aggressive deck as this. I mean, look at it. Um, I think, I think it's 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 going to be an interesting matchup because both players are very aggressive. I do think for me, Martin is the slight favorite because he's playing with two colors and that kind of gives him a little bit more options. Also, after sideboarding, he can board in his red elemental blasts. But I mean. I, I, I would say 60-40. That's, that's, that's what I think. That's my prediction here. So a slight favor, favor for, for Martin in this matchup. Um, let's go to the games and let's see how this is going to, uh, to pan out. Let's go to game one. Game number one. And we're seeing Martin with the Birds of Paradise playmat with the single basic island against the uh, Aryan with the Mr. T playmat. It looks like both of these players have already started uh, I guess Aryan was on the play because he already has a library of Alexandria and there we see Martin with the basic island. So Aryan just activating his library, finding another card, playing an underground sea here. What is he going to do? Playing a Black Lotus. Is he going to play a, for example, a Surrender Jin? That would be pretty cool. Maybe not the best move, but it would be really cool. Cracking the Lotus, tapping sea. Oh, <laughs> brutal. A mind twist. Now let's hope 
Actually, well, I'm hoping for that, that he's going to hit a Psychic Purge and he's going to get 5 damage off of that. That would be quite exceptional. Let's see. There's an Earthquake, a Mana Drain, and a Serendip Afrit. Very strong cards. No Psychic Purge. And I mean, this is looking very difficult already here for Martin. I mean, and losing three cards and facing a Library of Alexandria. Now passing turn, at least he can counter with two blue open, but of course he just lost his Mana Drain. And I mean, this is really difficult here for, for Aryan. I mean, for, for Martin. Aryan just, uh, you know, he's got his low eye. He's got enough cards. Although, it looks like he's choosing to get off of the Library of Alexandria plan because he's playing a land, and I believe he doesn't have enough cards then to draw an extra card with his Library of Alexandria. And, oh, here is a Blood Moon, and this is the perfect answer to the board state of Aryan. This is devastating for Aryan right here. Aryan will now have to find a way to play around this Blood Moon. He now has three basic mountains. Oh, four basic mountains because of the Blood Moon. Remember, he's playing almost mono blue with two black cards. There's nothing really he can do. And Martin is just passing turn as well. So this is turning out to be quite a strange game. At least he's finding a basic swamp. I guess he wants a basic island. He prefers that. There we see a basic island for Aryan. But Martin is not doing much. So maybe, you know, this can give Aryan a possibility here. Aryan not playing out anything. I mean, that, that Blood Moon is really making it difficult for him. But here is a second island. Tapping both. There's the Lord of Atlantis 2-2. Two, two giving all the merfolks plus one, plus one, an island walk, and there is a quick, oh, look at this, a quick lightning bolt, and then followed by a Psyblast on the life total of Aryan. Aryan dropping to 16 here, Martin on 19, it seems. Or perhaps that should be 18, because he's taking two damage from the Psyblast. What an interesting game this is. I really thought Aryan was winning after, you know, starting with the Loa, then playing a Mind Twist, but Martin completely back in the game because of that Blood Moon. And this could become quite interesting. Tapping a blue and four mountains here. Oh, there is a recall. Will there be a counterspell? There is a power sink, and that will do it. Means he will have to tap out now. And I'm, I'm talking about Aryan. He's not actually not doing that. He needs to tap his swamp and his basic island. And there we see a Chaos Orb. Interesting. Maybe I would have flipped the orb on an island. Maybe. But I guess Martin is just waiting for Aryan to play a threat and then dealing with it with the Chaos Orb. That's an understandable strategy as well. There we see a Time Walk taking an extra turn. But yeah, I mean, Time Walk is a very powerful card, but in this situation, it's not really exotic. At least he's finding something, it seems, from the top of his deck, playing a Surrender of Freed, and he's going to flip on it straight away, so he's going to try to to kill it here. And that could be, and that's a good flip, by the way, that could be the reason that Martin didn't decide to go for that second island, thinking, you know, he's playing he's playing blue, he's playing with Surrender of Freed's, and one blue is enough to cast those. And there's a Flying Man from Martin, by the way, and another Lord of Atlantis here from Aryan, who is passing turn. That Lord of Atlantis seems to stick, at least for now, and attack through the air. One damage here. Aryan dropping to 15. And there is another Serenip, and this time it's on the side of Martin. And now it's looking difficult for Aryan here, who has no flyers at the moment. But maybe he's about to change that. Tapping six. Will we see a Mahamoti Jin hitting the board here? Oh, it's a Brain Geyser. Okay. <laughs> that is pretty good business for Aryan. I really thought it would be his one Mahamoti Jin that he has in his deck. That would really help him at this point of the game. And there's a Chaos Orb of his own. That means he can start flipping next turn. And here we see Martin taking a damage. He's on 16 right now. Going to attack probably for 4 here. That means that Aryan's going to drop to 11. I wonder what else he's going to do here. Tapping 3 is Psyblast. That means he's going to drop down to 7. Martin taking 2 damage. He's going to go down to 14. But things are looking mighty... Are starting to look mighty bad for Aryan. He really needs to solve this. On the other hand, if he can get rid of that Surrendip Afrit on the side of Martin... 
and he has that chaos orb of course to do that then already the thing the the game looks completely different but maybe he wanted to use that chaos orb on the blood moon he's gonna attack first which i think is a good decision because he can't use it as a blocker anyway martin dropping here to 12 what is he gonna do next is he gonna use the chaos orb tapping four here oh five i guess playing an air elemental that is pretty sweet i talked about having my doubts uh, about including that air elemental during the deck tech, but look at the air elemental go now. It's it's really good. It's a great blocker against both of the flyers of Martin. Of course, Martin has direct damage. Only two cards in hand, though. Let's see what he can do. Is attacking with both? Is there a lightning bolt in hand? Dealing one damage, he's going to six. Are we going to see a bolt on the elemental, or is he just going to play a fireball? He can cast a fireball for excuse me for five here five is not going to be enough look at him think there is an often troll and is he just gonna pass turn here and oh also playing a fireball to kill the air elemental okay so he did decide to kill the air elemental that must have been a difficult decision and now he's flipping and is that a hit or not it looks like they're discussing it but that's a hit on the blood moon and that means that all the lands return back to normal so i mean this is great for Aryan, but i think blood moon has done an amazing job getting martin back in this game one gets to draw a card immediately off the library of alexandria here let's see what he's going to do next Playing an underground sea. He also has, of course, his two Mishra's factories up and running again. But he is on six life. He needs to find some kind of solution for that flying man. Now remember, Martin is top decking. And Aryan has a Loa and a full grip of cards here. So that's pretty insane. So it's up to Martin to quickly try to finish this. Finding a card here. And there is, oh, I missed that. There's the Ma Multi Chin by Aryan. Wow, that is looking super good in this situation. Wow, that 5 6 flyer is an absolute powerhouse. And the question is, is Martin going to attack with it or not? He can also attack with his factories, of course. He now has three Mishra's factories on the board. He can simply animate one attack and he can pump it to a 4 4. Of course, Martin can then block with his regeneration. So I guess I'm not giving the best advice here. Don't do that, Aryan. Don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> or is he going to attack with both? That's also an option, of course. And then he can choose to pump one. Well, it looks like he's attacking with one and attacking with the Mahamoti. So going, playing very aggressively. Blocking one here with the Often Troll. And of course, then Aryan pumps his Mishra's Factory to a 3-3. Three, three. The 5-6 Flyer is dealing 5 damage here to Martin. Martin is dropping to 6 as well. Both of these players on 6 life. Wow. Wow, wow, what can Martin do? Another Blood Moon hitting the table. But there's a mana, there's a counter spell on the mana drain. Ho <laughs> ho! This is such a swingy game one. I'm really enjoying seeing these two decks battling it out. Oh man, this is really nice magic. Uh, let's see. So remember, the Blood Moon's on the board, so all the non basics are now basic mountains again. So that's no extra card draw for Aryan anymore, no Mishra's Factories anymore. No underground seas anymore. But of course, he still has his 5 6 flyer. I guess Martin has to block it now. Chum block it. Deciding not to go into one. Interesting. What is he planning to do here? Of course, a single side blast would be enough now for Aryan to win this game. And there's not a side blast, but there's a Surrendip Afrit. Wow, and that Surrendip is risky. But I think the thing here is that in the end, Aryan simply drew too many cards with Library of Alexandria and a Brain Geyser and then getting back with the library. Here we see Martin saying, okay, you got this one. There's no way of me getting out of this one. But I must say, Martin, uh, the way you got back into this game with the Blood Moon, brilliant, because I thought you were done for after the early Loa and the Mind Twist by Aryan. Really, really interesting game one. Really looking forward to game number two. We're going to let these players sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. And uh, it's one up for Aryan. He won that one. Uh, but that was a really exciting uh, first first game. So I'm looking forward to the second one. Let's see if Martin can, uh, can get a 
get a victory and then force a game number three out of this. At least he's got a good start, I guess, with a Volcanic Island and a Flying Man. Single Island by Aryan with the pass turn. That probably means it's going to drop to 19 here exactly. Second Volcanic Island. And again, passing turn here, it seems. And uh, yeah, there he goes. Second Basic Island passing turn again. Not much happening, but you know when you're playing Mono Blue and you see two islands, you start to worry about a counterspell, despite the fact that Aryan is not even playing with it. There we see a Surrender, and there is a Power Sink. So that's solved. There's another Volcanic Island, and I guess, you know, when you're Aryan, you're thinking, you know what, if he doesn't counter it, it's a bonus. If he counters it, at least he's lost a counterspell. There is a Surrendip on the site now by Martin, because Aryan, of course, opened up for, because he tapped out to play his own Surrendip. Tapping for Control Magic, that is pretty sweet, because now Martin stepped out again. Uh-oh. So that means a Control Magic here for uh, for Aryan, and I, I guess that Control Magic may as well stick for a long time since he's playing against Red and Blue, so there's no access to Disenchant or Tranquility or anything else. Maybe Martin's going to later in the game steal it back, playing in Control Magic on the Control Magic. That's, of course, an option. Both players playing with Cyblast. So Cyblast, also a great target here. And look at this, a Diamond Valley. That is quite interesting. So if Martin would find a way to get his creature back, then in response, Aryan can always use Diamond Valley and gobble it up and gain some life. Let's see what Martin's going to do here. Tapping. Oh, Red Elemental Blast. And he's playing one main, and I'm sure he boarded in three more from the side, uh, sideboard. I think these Red Elemental Blasts may turn out. Oh, there we see a Mana Drain. They may turn out decisive. That's what I wanted to say. But there is a nice Mana Drain. That means an extra mana. Not too much, though. But maybe he can do something with it. Tapping. Oh, <laughs> this is pretty cool for Aryan. Having that one single Mahamoti in hand with that mana drain, having enough mana, it all works for him here. He is down to 15 because of, of course, the damage that he takes from his stolen Surrender Pafrit. And he's now going to go down to 14. But it's looking pretty good with that Mahamoti Jin. Probably going to swing in here. Why wouldn't he? And there's again a Library of Alexandria, but I don't think he's got a lot of cards in hand. That's always difficult with these online games because it's hard to see how many cards a player has. Attacking here with the 5 power. He could, I mean, he can of course block on the Surrender, then play a Bolt. That's an option. It is a 2 for 1. Is that what Martin's going for? He can still do it in end step. Doesn't have to do it now, so he's just going to wait and see. There is a Lord of Atlantis. And it looks like Martin's just going to draw, so he just jump blocked with his Surrendip. Quite interesting. Didn't want to take any more damage, I guess, from the Surrendip. The problem is, though, that now next turn he's going to face the Surrendip of his opponent. So, interesting choice here to jump. I really expected him to bolt after that, so maybe there's another plan behind it. I mean, if he would play with a white splash, you could say he's, he's setting up a balance. Um, but even then, maybe you want to keep your, your Surrendip. Okay, well... I don't know. I don't know what's in his hand. I'm sure he has his reasons to play it the way he's playing it. And now look at Aryan. He's planning a big attack here. Look at that. That's Lord of Atlantis, two Mishra's factories, Mahamoti Jin, and a Surrendip all attacking Martin. And Martin's going to probably jump here on the Mahamoti, but he's still taking four, six, nine damage, dropping to nine. This is huge. And is Aryan going to win the second game and win the match? Because remember, he's already up a game here. Martin needs something really, really good. Maybe a control magic on the Mahamoti Jin, but even then he takes tons of damage. Oh, man. Passing turn here. I think, I think this is it. I think Martin's going to lose. But you never know. You never know. Attacking with everything. Does he have a green fog or something? Does that even exist in old school? I don't think so. And yep, that's it. That's it. Shaking the hand here. That's it. And uh, wow, 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 wow. That first game was exceptional. And the second game just went by so fast. So fast. Um, thank you both for playing this, uh, this game, playing it on the stream and allowing me to put it on my channel. Thank you, Aryan and Martin.
Great, great players. Great to see your decks. You can actually see them here in, in the background. And I, of course, want to thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, um, you can do so in a few simple steps. First thing you can do is like this video. That already helps. Also, you can leave a comment. Let me know what you think of both of these decks. Really curious to hear from you about the Mono Blue Fish deck. What do you think of my analysis and would you make different choices? Or do you think it is quite interesting what Aryan uh, is trying to do here? Um, you can also become a subscriber if you're not a subscriber yet. Um, about 40% of all my viewers is not a sub yet of Timmy Talks. So if you would take the time to become a subscriber, it really helps my channel because it tells YouTube how incredibly important and good my content is. You know, so uh, if you could do that, it would help me a lot. Thank you. If you're not a member yet and you're right now subscribing, that really helps. Thank you, miss or mister. Um, other things you can do is you can support the channel by becoming a Patreon. The cool thing here is that actually Aryan and Martin are both patrons of the channel. So that is a pretty, pretty funny. Um, and if you also want to support Timmy Talks, if you want to support the channel if you like what you see here then you can click on the info card that's appearing right now that will take you to timmy talks patreon page and there you can find out how you can support me and my channel so thank you for considering that as an option talking about it let's go to the end scroll and let's uh, go and take a look at the amazing fantastic wonderful channel members and patrons of timmy talks what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!